Following on from my video on what every antenna on the 4 times square skyscraper does, you join me today half a mile south at the one and only Empire State Building. This is a 102 storey Art Deco skyscraper in Midtown Manhattan in New York City that was built between 1930 and 1931. The tragic terrorist attacks of September the 11th, 2001 completely destroyed the World Trade Center's Twin Towers, including the broadcast centers it was home to. This left most of New York City and the surrounding area stations without many transmitters. By October 2001, nearly all of the city's commercial broadcast stations, both television and FM radio, were again transmitting, but from the top of the Empire State Building, with 4 Times Square joining the effort to rehome the city's services. Despite offering unbelievable views of the surrounding area, including 4 Times Square, One World Trade Center and Downtown Brooklyn, the Empire State Building is also home to a remarkable transmitter tower that is bristling with antennas, and we'll be looking at all the major ones in this video. If we start at the very top, we can see these amazing batwing antennas. A batwing or super turnstile antenna is a type of broadcast antenna used for VHF and UHF frequencies. Stacked batwing antennas such as these have been commonly used in television broadcasting due to their omnidirectional characteristics. The ones on the Empire State Building are dielectric TF3MT VHF batwings that serve WNBC and WNYW on channels 4 and 5 that are now unfortunately retired and left on the tower for aesthetic purposes. Further down is this section which is at this time relatively empty except for the antenna for WED49 on channel 21. This is a public broadcasting service or PBS member network for the state of Connecticut with additional coverage over Greater New York. This empty section of mast was once home to WFUT30, a television station licensed to Newark, New Jersey. Either side of this section are platforms and you can see some ropes hanging down but I'm not sure why. Next down is what looks like one antenna but is in fact actually two. The top two tiers are also known as bays and this forms part of a four-sided ERI COG 1084 2CP 2-bay master FM antenna and below is the 1-bay mini master antenna. The master antenna serves 16 stations by radiating multiple radio station signals at the same time with the use of a complex system of combiners to avoid interference. The Minimaster serves three stations along with two backups. Then we get to a four bay dielectric Minimaster, which as far as I can tell is for VHF channels 7, 11 and 13. Next is this cylindrical dielectric digital television antenna that serves WCBS, a television station in New York City, serving as the flagship of the CBS network. This antenna also serves WWOR, a television station licensed to Secaucus, New Jersey, serving the New York City area as the flagship of My Network TV, and finally WNBC, a television station in New York City, serving as the flagship of the NBC network. Much further down, mounted on the side of the building itself, is what appears to be a duplicate of this master that may possibly be a reserve that's used when the main antenna is down for maintenance, but I can't be certain. This portion of the mast is quite crowded with an ERI FM mini master four sided array which serves WCBS on 101.1, WFAN on 101.9, WQHT on 97.1, and WPLJ on 95.5. All of these stations run 6 or 7 kilowatts with the exception of WPLJ on 6.6. .6. And finally the last of the larger structures, a relatively new ERI 1184 C3P-2 combiner backup FM antenna. This is an auxiliary array licensed for 19 radio stations. The tower is littered with a plethora of antennas that serve repeaters which I can only surmise are used by local businesses, utilities, emergency services and the like as well as numerous point to point microwave links that provide short range communications or serve as links in the chain over longer distances. 
Not being from the US, it's harder to identify the certain antennas that various organisations use, so any suggestions for everything else are welcome. At night, as the light fades, the Empire State Building puts on quite the light show, which can be seen for miles around, unless there's low-lying cloud or fog concealing the top section. While we're up the Empire State, let's take a look at another iconic New York City skyscraper and the former home to some broadcast equipment in days gone by. This is the Chrysler Building and it's now home to an awful lot of land mobile services, the two main ones being the NYPD and the Fire Department. Looking closely we can see a number of white stick type antennas mounted on protruding brackets. How are they accessed I hear you ask? Well, the panels behind slide out of the way to allow engineers to work on the antennas. I hope you're enjoying this US series of what does everything do on a radio mast, if you are then stay tuned for more. I checked and double checked everything in this video but if I did make any mistakes then please feel free to correct in the comments below.